session three, talking about education, science, and communication. Uh, today in the jury, we have Alvin, Aniel, and Eric Rottinger from uh, Université Côte d'Azur, IRCAN. Uh, they are research engineer and researcher working on developmental biology, regeneration, cellular and molecular biology, stress response, on cnidarians, and aging. Um, Christophe Amber from uh, you see also in RIA. Uh, uh, Christophe is uh, an innovation mentor, uh, so specializing in innovation, scientific valorization, and startup creation. Luana Jugman, uh, CEO from uh, Curie Ocean uh, in Ireland, is a special mentor on education, fisheries perception, data science, if we can say that, uh, Luana. Um, Florent Favier, uh, specializing in digital communication, ocean literacy, and ocean governance. I think uh, we can say as well a little. And Jean uh, Vincent Duringrasa, uh, so teacher, uh, biology teacher at, uh, at Education National. <laughs> <laughs> so coming here for uh, an external point of view, scientific external uh, point of view, and Elena Bovio, postdoc at INRAE. Uh, specializing on uh, microbiology, we said just before, marine natural products, fungi, and bioremediation. So, this afternoon, four students will present that work, their work so on, as I told you, education, science, and communication. We will start with Manon, who is standing here for already uh, quite, uh, quite long, <laughs> <laughs> but not stressed. <laughs> uh, Manon uh, Desplechin uh, will talk about assessing the general population knowledge and perception of ocean awareness to update a conservation program. Falco Martin will talk about a study on microplastic on the Catalan coast, uh, all through the food web from, uh, from, the, uh, from the plankton, the fish, and the whales. Marine Jack, who will talk about the environmental perception. This word will come back a lot this afternoon, environmental perception this time on the Mediterranean coast. And Sabrina Lantini uh, will conclude uh, talking about the use of social media platforms to raise people awareness uh, in the context of marine protected areas. So we're approaching the moment now. Um, here we go. Voilà. Uh, Aujourd'hui, c'est compliqué. We will just share this. With others. And as usual, I will ask Aldin if Aldin, you can see the PowerPoint. I see it. Thank you. Great. So, Manon, yeah, do you have a countdown for 15 yes. minutes? I guess it's easier for you. I'm ready. Can I start? Yes. Yes, all right. So hello everyone, welcome to my master thesis presentation about assessing the general population and knowledge. Uh, of ocean awareness in Ireland. So this study is a study that I made during six months uh, as an internship within the Curie Ocean Association. And uh, Curie Ocean is doing an environmental educational uh, workshop in Ireland for children in schools. And uh, this study is gonna follow a conventional scientific structure. Okay. Yes. Um, it's the other way around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can do the Um No, I just got the question. I just got that. I have no idea what it's not working today. I'm really sorry, man. No, it's fine. <laughs> Was just walking at twelve. So should I start from, can start the end, from the beginning? From the beginning, or okay. Okay. Continue from the beginning. Okay. As it's not live, we will cut all the way. Okay. 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 So I'm ready, this. right? I'm <laughs> done. So hello everyone, welcome again to my master thesis presentation about assessing the general population knowledge and perception of ocean awareness in Ireland. So this study was made during my six months uh, internship within the Curie Ocean Association, which are doing an um, educational workshop uh, in school for children in Ireland. So this study is going to follow um, conventional uh, scientific structure. 
Um, so as you might know, uh, as you might know, oceans are facing important challenges uh, to recover, many due to um, human activities. Uh, marine conservation is shown to be an important tool to engage co communities and to drive conservation efforts. Combining with research on uh, public perception on oceans issues, it can be um, it can be better uh, it can help to better manage and protect the marine environment as ocean is part of our daily life. Uh, to understand to understand public perceptions, surveys are mostly used. So it would be better to set up uh, better marine conservation efforts, for example, and uh, in order to make the public realize about the, the importance of oceans and to make them realize as well how their uh, individual, individual actions can affect the, ma the marine environment as well. So this study is going to present you uh, the result of a survey, a national Irish survey made on, the, made on the assessing the Irish perception and knowledge of the island's marine environment and conservation topics. Our analysis helped to identify gaps in diverse areas, for example, behavior, species protections, and other biodiversity knowledge. Uh, it gives us as well an insight on the, um, on the influence and perception of people thanks to their individual backgrounds. Um, this is part of a wider communication strategy to, to um, raise awareness, ocean awareness in Ireland and to engage local community as well, and also for improving a uh, Curie Oceans workshop. So um, uh, this study, uh, during this study, I'm going to show you only the main point because the survey was made on 31 questions and I won't have the time to go deeper. But if you are interested, of course, I can send you my, my thesis manuscript uh, that I invite you to read it if you want. So the survey was launched during one month uh, in, in March 2021. Uh, within the 32 counties of Ireland, uh, and we collected 1,100 answers. The survey was also divided into four sections, and it was as well inspired into, in, on um, surveys, questionnaires, scientific questionnaires made on uh, marine perception. So the first question, the first section is all about the demographic uh, questions. We've included personal experiences with the sea questions. So for example, the frequency of visiting the sea, uh, if participants noticed mar marine litter while visiting the coast, uh, if they have been already in contact with fishermen or marine conservation support. Then we presented a list of ocean and benefits threat, uh, ocean benefits and threats, uh, and we asked the participants to rank them according to their importance and concern. Then um, we wanted to understand as well the emotional connections, the concern, and some kind of behavior patterns. Uh, we wanted as well to um, assess the knowledge of uh, participants by asking them some uh, marine species questions. For the data analysis, I mostly used to do the, the Air Studio software for the statistical analysis, uh, for the questions of contingencies tables as well. So for example, the table here that crossed variables. And it helps me as well to formulate hypothesis that was then uh, tested with the T-square test. So now I'm moving on on the results and discussion part with first the sample portrait that was mainly composed of women, so 73 women. We believe from previous study that women are more aware and concerned about the, um, about the environmental topics. So maybe this is why we have a, we have a huge amount of uh, women in the sample. And then we also had people mostly aged between 20 and 39 years old, uh, with no children, mostly Irish, and with a primary school completed. In addition, 88% of the sample are residents living in a county near to the sea. Unfortunately, the sample um, is not representative of the general Irish populations because it wasn't homogeneous and it might be due to the divulgation of the survey that was mainly through uh, environmental uh, related group. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the perception and knowledge of oceans benefit and threats. Uh, with first the ocean's benefit, the population is quite aware about the interactions between air and oceans and how the oceans regulate the climate and um, regulate the climate and sorry and the weather and has an impact on the, on the weather uh, because they choose the climate regulations and the environmental benefits as high as uh, highly important benefits. Then people uh, see as well the oceans as an important cultural ecosystem services. 
because these two, the education and science and also the salary value has highly important as well. So here maybe we can take that into account for the development of conservation support. Then about the ocean threat, uh, people are, have a good perceptions of the menace that threat that oceans face, such as the pollution and the climate change, the climate, the climate change, because they they rated this threat as main threat during the survey. Uh, then they gave the lowest concern to the marine renewable energy and the tourism threats. So maybe here it can be as well an element uh, to highlight in the in the in the conservation effort and to teach the populations. And finally, uh, we found the same pattern in uh, other studies. So here I'm going to talk about some interesting findings. So for example, the marine and the food production benefits was rated as the least important. The medicine was uh, influenced by the nationalities. So Irish people rated these benefits as the lowest are at the at least important contrary to other nationalities. So maybe here the Irish um, populations doesn't are not really aware about the biomedical resources of the oceans. And for the food production benefits, it was mainly influenced by the age. Younger population, uh, younger populations like uh, under 20 years old, doesn't seem to see this benefit as an ocean benefit. So it might be due to their um, Irish diet because the fish consumption is quite low, especially among the young generation. And about the ocean threat, the fisheries was, uh, was uh, rated as a moderate level of concern. However, fisheries is classified as one of the main threats that face the oceans. So maybe here, um, the sample are not really aware about that. So maybe it's, it's a lack of information that needs to be deeper analyzed. So now I'm going to talk about the connections, concern, uh, personal experience of each individual. So 40% say that they have been already in contact with fishermen and people with more contact with fishermen are, have more connections and more concern. But the more 48 indicated that they are going often to the, to the coast, visiting the coast, and this has as well an impact on the, con the connections and the concern. Uh, in addition, approximately all the respondents of the sample say, replied that they are being bothered when they see, uh, when they notice my litter on the coast while visiting the coast. Then 70% still connected to the sea, and this is uh, influenced by the county. Uh, living near the sea might provide a kind of a higher affinity and higher connections, contrary to inland residents that maybe perceive the sea as something distant. And finally, 93% are concerned by ocean issues, and this is influenced by the age. Uh, younger, younger, younger generations seem, gave a, lo a significantly lower level of concern, contrary to um, oldest generations that maybe have more, maybe they have more experience and could have seen the degradation of the marine environments over the time. Um, then I'm going to talk about the behavior intentions, and we obtain really great results. So 92% change their behavior to a more sustainable living, and 89% of them indicated that they are likely to change in the future. And this is mostly applied, especially on women and countries near to the sea. Uh, so it shows us here a good, a really positive engagement of the population. But which kind of behavior I am talking about? So participants had to take several um, behavior among a list of uh, behaviors. And the list chosen was all about the way of transportation of, uh, of people. Maybe it shows here that it's more difficult for Irish people, for example, to change this kind of behavior. But the most chosen was all about the waste management and the plastic consumption. According to a question that deeper analyzed the way of Irish household uh, manage their waste, uh, only 32 persons separate the cane their kids and 47% uh, or, uh, or uh, use the, the compost for recycling their waste. Uh, we wanted as well to study the, um, the effort of uh, participants to change in the future, according to a list of diverse examples of, uh, of behaviors. And the most chosen was all about uh, carrying reusable bags for shopping, and the least chosen was preferring buying secondhand products. So here it can be as well an, an element to talk about in environmental workshops, uh, especially to show the advantages of buying secondhand products, especially for reducing uh, plastic consumption, for example. So now we're going to talk about the marine conservation effort that has uh, really good advantages. 76% of the sample has been in contact with marine conservation effort, mainly through visiting aquariums. But if we have a look on the environmental education programs, only 21% of the sample has been in contact with 
However, uh, marine conservation contact is associated with an increase in connections and concern and can influence as well the, the behavior of people. So it shows us here the importance of education. So for people who role, uh, interacting with the sea and having personal experiences, for example, the contact with fishermen or marine conservation support might change the perception by increasing uh, the connections and consent. And if it does, it will lead to, um, it will lead to a change in behavior. So now I'm going to talk about the participant's knowledge about the Irish marine environment. So participant has a good identification about the marine mammals that are around them. 50% of them knows that we can find corals in Irish waters, but more than 50% thinks, thinks that corals are protected in Ireland, and this is not the case. So this misunderstanding may be result as because corals, especially tropical coral reef, has are uh, the focus of many media discussions and scientific papers. So maybe you can create here a gap of knowledge. Then 73% uh, say that, that they didn't know that sea turtle can be found in Irish waters as well. Uh, these animals are more associated with tropical environments. So maybe here it can uh, show uh, a kind of confusion by the participants. And then 85% of them um, didn't know that 90% of the, of the Irish biodiversity can be found on the waters. Otherwise, uh, participant has a good uh, understanding about the species, marine species protection in Ireland, especially the basking trout, which is a iconic key species in Ireland. However, 20% of them replied that they are not being informed about the species protections. Uh, but um, most of them want to know more about it. And at the end, in total, 95% wants to, to know more about the Irish marine environment. So it shows us here, again, a huge interest and um, a good engagement of the, of the population. Then respondent knowledge is mostly influenced by the connections and the concern. So it looks like participants with more connections, uh, with more connected and more concern, um, have more knowledge, uh, are, more, are, sorry, are more well informed about the Irish marine environment. Uh, having personal experiences, for example, uh, the contact with the fishermen can increase as well knowledge. So maybe communications with fishermen can uh, can help raising awareness, of, uh, raising awareness of the population. Then, of course, the marine conservation contact can bring knowledge as well and can teach the populations uh, for uh, a local environment. So therefore, again, interacting with the sea and having personal experiences as well is associated with an increase in knowledge. So to conclude, um, perception. Sorry. To conclude, perception and knowledge is is vary amongst individual backgrounds and can change through times as well. Uh, indeed, so we saw the gender, the age, uh, the geographical geographical location, nationality, education level, and having children may might influence on the population viewpoint of the marine environment. So. But this study reduces the effect of the conservation's effort on the population awareness. Indeed, we have seen that third quarter are being in contact with marine conservation efforts that lead to more connected and concerned and more concerned people. It influences as well on the behavior, significantly increased the knowledge, and this was as well in line with other studies. So therefore, marine conservation's effort is, uh, is a good tool for influencing and educating peoples. It engages the, the community as well and can teach about the local environment. However, we have seen that only 21% of uh, the sample in this, in this questionnaire has been in contact with education program. So, um, so therefore, it is important to set up an uh, environmental workshop to strengthen the relationship between the society and the seas. So, Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I would like to deeply thank uh, Luana that uh, gave me the opportunity to do this uh, internship and uh, that helps me during the, driving this thesis. And I would like to thank as well the Maris teacher and the Maris team that was always here when I needed. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mano. And <laughs> thank you. The Your reference. long list of references. <laughs> you can keep so. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Manon. Um, so now, sorry, stop. Question, question yeah. starts. Uh, so today you can ask so one to two questions per per to remember. Uh, maybe we will start with Aldine. Hi, Manon. 
thank you so much for this nice presentation. So my first question is, um, did you compare your data with uh, previous data that has been done uh, on the same field and even from other countries? Because it, it never has been done in Ireland. So, but what about the other country compared to your data? So I did, for example, the list with the ocean perception, uh, the ocean benefits and the ocean threats. It was already made in other studies, for example, mostly in uh, studies in uh, European countries. And it was kind of the same pattern. So this is why I said the, that it was in line with all the study. It was like just, yeah, we found approximately the same patterns. But all about the knowledge, for, exa for example, the marine species, uh, I found only one paper that talked about this kind of questions, and it was made on the UK waters. And uh, this paper was, they, they showed that uh, population in general have a good understanding, but there are some gaps. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um, did you look at the evaluation of participants regarding to the age? So is there a age trend that it's much more willing to do things than other? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really remember, but I think it was mostly the, the young populations that were really, uh, how do you say that? Sorry, uh, Eric, can you um, uh, decrease your sound on your, on your computer, please? Uh, so I think, yeah, it was most about like the, the, the rank age, uh, 20 or 39 years old, I was really more into the intention of changing behavior. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Eldin. Eric, so you can jump from one microphone to another. Let's, let's try. Thanks, Manon, for, for, for your presentation. Uh, overall, it's a very nice uh, study. I, I have a few questions. So did you set up the, the questions of the survey or was it already done before you, you arrived? I set up uh, the world survey with the, the help of Luana. We did okay. it together. Yeah. And, and yes, and I was inspired about other surveys as well. Okay, and then how did you spread the surveys? So you we said the numbers, but um, perhaps I missed it when you said it. Uh, we spread uh, mainly online with the Google form. Uh, I also contacted some um, uh, uh, some companions, for example, uh, environmental related groups. Uh, for example, I have some names if you want. The Galway Aquarium, for example. And but it was mainly through online by emails and yes, with the social media as well. Okay, so it, it comes back to the to the question. You say that uh, your your survey doesn't really represent the the the, the Irish population, and so my question here is: Is it mm -hmm. linked to the way you did the survey at the at the end, and how can you change that in the future if you want to repeat it? Yeah, I think it was mainly due to the duplication, as I said. Um, yeah, I I contacted. I think it was mostly people that were really interested into the subject and. Um, yeah, if I wanted wanted to improve, I think I would do it uh, in physical, like in physics, uh, talking to people. For example, I wanted to reach more fishermen and farmers as well. It was my idea to, yeah, I wanted to, to contact, for example, fishermen, uh, no, farmers, for example, to have their perceptions of the sea, but it was complicated uh, to do that online because I don't really know if they are using uh, uh, technology and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Exactly. If I may, Christoph, another question. I got a little bit confused on one on your, on your last slide where you say that 18% want to learn more, but then at the end, uh, the conclusion is 95% want to learn more. So I didn't get the yeah. connection between the two. Oh, okay. Yes, this one. Um, so in, can you see me? Yes. Can I see you at the slide. Uh, so, yeah. So I ask a general question about the marine environment, the Irish marine environment, and and twenty uh, like uh, some participants can choose the I don't know category options, and 25, 20 percent of them choose these options, but among the twenty percent, eighty percent want to know more about the marine and Irish environment. But the end of the slide, it was uh, totally another questions. That it was the question was, uh, do you want to know more about the Irish marine environment, for example? And 95% of the sample replied that yes, they want to know more. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, still, 
Yeah. Comment, I think, in your slides, there's a lot of information where, where I didn't really get to where this information was coming from. So I was okay. a little bit missing the sort of raw analyzed data, the conclusion, uh -huh. and put back into context. And this is for me here an example, because you say you make a conclusion out of a complete different question, but yes. then you oh, do okay. something before, so it's a little bit hard to, to follow. Oh, but yeah, I okay. okay, I see. Okay. All right. Thank you for the the tip. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we can go on with uh, Christophe Amber, and then we will go to uh, Florent. Oh, she, uh, sorry, I didn't mm -hmm. have it. Ah, yes, your mask, please. So, <laughs> stupid, mais je sais. <laughs> I don't have a mask. I don't ask any question. <laughs> <laughs> So I have one question regarding the sample purely, because you came with this 1,110 uh, people who responded mm -hmm. to the questionnaire. Uh, but what I am struggling is where is the original sample coming from? Has it been pre-sampled, you know, to have a diverse population? Or how did you pick up this uh, pre-survey? Uh, and then my second question would be, and. Uh, Aldine said it before, it's quite similar. Um, you come with a descriptive analysis from this mm -hmm. survey, but uh, do you have any benchmark or anything that would say, how does Ireland, is it like other countries or is it something different? Or only the French are different, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was my two questions in one. So wait, the first question was about the sample, right? Yeah, so what did you want I'm to... just Manon, before you answer, just Christophe, if you can try to speak a bit louder, un petit peu plus fort, parce qu'on a du mal à t'entendre. Uh, uh, sorry, Christophe, I think, can you just repeat the first yeah. and I try to reply to the second as well after. So the first was okay. about the, the sample, right? Yeah, the pre-sample. And you wanted to say the pre-sample. Yeah. So, ah, for example, if I... If I choose people, if I choose people before sending the, the survey? To whom is that bit sent? And how yeah. did you sample this 1,000 people? Because I saw the age spread is quite mm -hmm. between 19 um, and So I sent many online, as I said, and with the media and all that stuff, and the media, the media, the social media. But honestly, we were really quite surprised about the number of uh, answers. It just came up into two days. It was so, so crazy. Maybe Luana, Luana can, have a, can have a word about it, but it was really crazy. And I think it's because uh, I contacted via um, email uh, Ocean Literacy, which is like an environmental, uh, marine environmental website mm -hmm. in Ireland. And they did uh, an article about uh, my survey and my studies and all that stuff. And I don't know what happened. It was crazy during two or three days, we collected so many answers. And I think it's because of this article. And uh, then the pre-sample, uh, what was the other question? Well, this pre-sample is- Oh, the benchmark. Time. Yeah, and the, yeah, and did you bench it? But if I come back to the pre-sample part- uh, The only thing that I know was about, uh, one survey was made in Ireland, but it was mostly about uh, perception, uh, how, it was it was different from my survey, but it was really about the ocean and benefit threat. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was kind of the same pattern. Was kind of the same pattern. And the people you sent the uh, mm -hmm. uh, survey to were people who were subscribed to uh, social media on uh, uh, marine biology or diversity, or uh, they, they they were aware about it. I mean, it was not people like me who cannot swim, right? The thing that I miss in my survey that I would uh, improve is the question about uh, the occupation, uh, the job of the, the, the participants, because I think uh, I just have the education level, but it doesn't inform me what they are studying, if they are aware, if they are studying marine perception, uh, if they are studying uh, environment or uh, this kind of, of things. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what they are doing. Uh, so I think it's the thing I miss in my, in my survey is the, is the job. I wanted to do it, and at the end, I I, I deleted because it, I wasn't sure. Is it fair to say that the population you had in the survey mm -hmm. did not represent the Irish population? Globally? No, I, I think they didn't represent at all. Okay. Because I have like so many women, and uh, in Ireland yeah. there is like fifty percent of male and fifty percent of, of female, and yeah, I had so many so many female. 
and it would be it would be a uh, woman <laughs> it would be okay. more interesting to have more uh men's to reply to my survey i think like to yeah. kind of understand their perception and their knowledge as well so you should have sent it to pubs in galway <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay thank you Mano. you're welcome thank you christophe uh so we will go to um to florent and then we will continue with jean vincent Thank you, Christophe. Thank you very much, Manon, and congratulations for your presentation. Thank you. Um, my first question would be, um, um, what was the purpose uh, of this survey? What are the, um, um, the tools that uh, are about to be made uh, out of these uh, results? So the first purpose, it was really to improve the workshop in the uh, in Curie Ocean. So we wanted to have the result to interpret them, analyze them, and OK, we have to upgrade this part in this workshop of this part of this workshop. Also, maybe we can uh, we can add this kind of topics or everything. So that was the, the first purpose. But I think Luana wanted as well to, to spread everything on the social media, because I think it's really quite uh, interesting. And we had as well a question about, uh, do you want to I think it was a question about uh, if they want to to be uh, aware or connected with more. Uh, I don't really remember. And a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people replied that they wanted to know more about the survey. They wanted to have the results and everything. So I think it can be nice to do it as well for uh, a, a larger, a wider um, scale in Ireland. So I don't know, maybe by contacting the policies, the government, or I, I don't really know. <laughs> But yes, the first uh, purpose was for improving the, the Curie Ocean workshop and to engage the local communities as well. Okay, so do you think that your results, uh, including the bias that were uh, underlined by, by some other member, jury members, do you think the, the results can help improving the, those uh, workshops? And if you had the, um, a magic wound, uh, if you had the, the, the time and, uh, and money, what would be the the first uh, um, actions you would uh, engage to to address this uh, this uh, this audience to be more aware to be more informed about ocean literacy ocean protection and and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah, of course you can approve the workshop, and uh, if I had one, I think. I would engage mostly the fishermen because I think fishermen has can have an impact really like I think it can have a good impact on the population awareness. I think yeah, I think fishermen can can help to raise awareness about uh, yeah about oceans. Uh, but maybe it needs to be deeper analyzed, deeper analysis or I, I don't know, but I think fishermen can have a yeah, can have an impact on that. Last quick question: Do you think uh, they have the, the same representation about the, the the state of the ocean than scientists could have? I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe I think yes about all the fisheries. Maybe like the the depletion of uh, fisheries stock and all that. I think they are quite aware because they are the job and maybe they they saw it directly. So maybe this is why well, they can have the biggest uh, impact when uh, to talk uh, to to talk with the people for example like to exchange the communication i think for yeah sharing their experience okay thank you very much okay so thank you Toron. let's go to uh, jean vincent and then we will conclude with elena so i'm going to talk about fishermen mm -hmm. so uh, what would be your main strategy or your main arguments to educate them uh, about the conservation of species about uh, fish stock management mm -hmm. the fishermen yeah the, the main argument that you would be use the main argument mm. or your strategy or i don't have a real idea can you repeat please <laughs> <laughs> what would be your main strategy yes to educate them to educate the fishermen yeah, about conservation of species about fish stock management or your main argument, mm -hmm. the scientific argument, or something like that. I don't really know. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, if you want, how I can educate them? Okay. 
That's a good question. Uh, I hope they want to be educated as well. Uh, but I think for me, I would propose them to to go in workshop and to share their experience with the with the children and and yeah, I hope they are. I hope they are aware about the that the ocean is facing many threats and especially the fisheries. But for educate them, uh, if, if doing when, when you educate, it's, 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 to, to convince, yeah, okay. to convince them, yes. to convince them, yeah, to touch them, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't really know. Sorry. Think about this. Uh, yeah, okay. to the next question. Yeah, you have something that pops up in my mind. But yeah. it's not the first time that a question comes up. I saw create a situation. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think I, I don't think I don't know if fishermen will be wants to be convinced as well. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. For me, I, I see them like yeah, no, we are doing our job. We need to live. We need to eat. Uh, so that's it. That's strong. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Yes, I hope they want to be, yeah, they want to be educated a little bit and maybe, I don't know, I don't know how the, well, what is the mindset of fishermen? <laughs> maybe we can go to Elena. Yes. Okay, so I, I have a question about your survey. Mm -hmm. uh, you work mainly with the closed question. Did you think to use an open question and if these would have changed uh, uh, some answer of, of your survey? Um, Yes, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think open questions. Uh, you mean one on, only one or several open questions? Or let me be transferred to the one uh, open question would be yeah. really difficult to manage at the end. Yeah, I think yeah. because I was surprised that uh, like uh, sixty uh, more than sixty percent of uh, the of the person say that uh, they change to live plastic free mm -hmm. and that. Uh, to me, it's uh, strange. I don't know if they understood the, what is the English Ah, okay, I see. So um, if you think that uh, using an open question, maybe mm -hmm. you would have uh, answered differently? Or... Yeah, yes, maybe, because we wanted to understand the way or how they manage the waste, uh, every people. So we had this kind of question. We had like several uh, kind of bins. And I asked them, can you uh, tick the bins that you have at home and how you manage the way your waste? But it was just by ticking was an open open question that maybe yes could have been a good idea but yeah maybe yeah maybe because i remember that this question we had some difficulty to to uh, build it and um yeah maybe it could have been a good idea to do open question Okay. Uh, I, I don't know because at the same time we have like one thousand replies. So yeah. like, if I would I have been like, uh, if I would yeah. be an so, open. There are a lot of uh, studies doing uh, open questions to take uh, uh, quantitative uh, mm -hmm. uh, feelings, yeah. um, qualitative sorry, qualitative feelings. But uh, yeah, it's difficult to collect yeah. a lot of them and yeah. then of course to convert them into because at some point you know scoring and things. Yes. Yeah. But it's possible. Yeah, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, we, especially with the number of. Uh, okay. Um, I'll just ask to the jury if one of you uh, would like to ask a, a last question, maybe from the first uh, members of Dynamic and Dean. Yes. Uh, your yes. mic is off, I think, Algin. So sorry, I was looking. So um, at one point, you you were talking about the biodiversity, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get. Can you can you come back on that and can you explain what you are talking about? You say uh, you say that uh, I don't know ninety percent of the Irish biodiversity were in the Irish water. So can yes, you come back okay. on that and this explain one, this kind of questions, right? This one, yeah, the last one, so, yeah. So for my section, marine species uh, protection, I had uh, no not protection, but like oh. For the, the sections knowledge, we had approximately six questions. Don't, so among these three ones, and um, so I asked people if they were aware that corals can be found, sea turtles can be found, and if they are aware as well that a lot, there is a huge richness of biodiversity in, underwater in island. So this is the my third question. Did you know that 90% of Irish biodiversity is found in Irish water? This percentage, I found it on internet, on the on the a website, I remember, an Irish website. So yeah, I wanted to, at the same time, to 
to inform people and to know if they are informed as well. Did I reply to your question? So you mean that only 3% of the biodiversity is online? 10%. So I, I, I don't get, um, so do you mean that in Ireland, 98% of uh, animal biodiversity mm -hmm. is under water? Yes, it's quite surprising. 90% of the biodiversity, Irish, the to yeah, the, yeah, like the, the whole Irish oh. biodiversity, 90% are found underwater. I, 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 I think we are surprised. <laughs> but, yeah, me too, uh, I was surprised when I discovered that as well. I'm sure you checked that with uh, scientific literature. Yeah, with Luana and yeah, okay, yeah, okay. like, this we, is why I got this kind of result uh, as well. We will love... come back to that, uh, okay. to, to that after. Thank you, uh, Aldine, for maybe really, really briefly. I see Florian, uh, Florian, you would like to come back also on something? Yes, just if possible, do you think uh, that um, the results of this uh, study are uh, interesting enough due to the fact that it seems that the people that replied are already somehow aware mm -hmm. about the ocean? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, I think I think they are. They were some part, some are already aware and some not, but. I can feel like in the survey they were quite engaged. Uh, they wanted to change a lot of uh, a lot of people has already changed, and yeah, this is why as well uh, is was um, he, he didn't match with the the sample of the general population because my my sample was they were too engaged <laughs> maybe they were too engaged yeah and too interesting touch the one where yes yes. Um, okay, thank, thank you a lot for, for all of you, um, and I think it's okay for the questions. Uh, that's not always usual, but as you and I are here, maybe you would like to, uh, to say a few things to, to Manon, especially to Manon. Well, Manon, well done for your presentation. Very, very proud. Um, you did a great job, and thank you all for your questions. I think they're very useful for me as well. So it's great to hear, um, and yeah, I can't wait to see you back here. Okay, nice. Um, I could find <laughs> That's it. It was not so so hard. No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, um, you stay here. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but uh, in the Kraken, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will, yes. Yeah. Uh, they're waiting for you. Okay. And um, good luck. See Thank you. you. Soon, of course. Thank you very much, all. Bye. Bye bye. 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 So, uh, we will ask uh, Falco to uh, join. Hello, Falco. Hello, everyone. Do you all hear me good? Ah, can you can you try again? Uh, do you hear me good? Mm. I will uh, have to ask you again. Okay, sorry. So I'm, sure. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit. Yes. Yeah? So I just arrived. Is it good, for everyone? Is it good? Uh, that's good for me. Good. Yes, it's good for you. Okay. Hello, Falco. Uh, yeah. I will ask you, uh, so you, as you are remote, you can take the control of your PowerPoint. So, uh, yeah. so I can share the screen? Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> Okay. Hello. Okay, as usual, I'm asking Aldine if you can see the screen of, uh, of Falco. Yes. Okay. Hello, Falco. So you're going to have uh, 15 minutes uh, to, uh, to present uh, your, your thesis. And yep. then uh, we will enter into a 15 minute uh, session of questions. Um, do you have a condom in front of you? If I have what? A condom. Condom, yeah, I have the condom here. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb you with that, uh, Franco. Um, do you have, by any chance, any possibility to, to change your internet connection? Because it's a bit difficult. Uh, right now, I have, it's the best connection that I can have right now, so I can't change. Okay, <laughs> it's good to know, so we will deal with that. In case uh, we have, uh, particular difficulties to hear some sentences. 
uh, I may allow myself to, to stop you just so you can come back, okay? Just let right. me know if everything doesn't flow well and yeah, feel free to, to interrupt me if you don't hear everything. Okay, I, I, I really hope it's going to be, to be okay. Thank you. Good luck, here we go. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm gonna to present you my master's thesis, so which is about uh, microplastics on the Catalan coast and more specifically the contamination of uh, marine organisms at different level of the fin whales food web. So I've conducted this six month project with the Edmatub Association, which is an NGO based in Spain uh, that is focusing on cetacean research. And so during my presentation, I will be following the scientific outline with so an introduction, material and methods, result and discussion together, and a conclusion to finish. And so first, I would like to give you a bit of background information regarding so fin whales and microplastics in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so first of all, the fin whale, also known as Balaenoptera physalus, is a marine mammal belonging to the suborders of mysticities with baleen. So indeed, it has baleen on its jaws that allows it to uh, filter the water in order to feed. So it's mainly feeding on small items such as zooplanktonic crustacean uh, with krill, which is its main food source, and copepods, but also on squids and small pelagic fish like anchovy and sardines. So it's occurring all around the world, but uh, but also in the Mediterranean. So in the Mediterranean Sea, we are focusing on the fin population that migrates there, migrates there during the months of um, March to June. And the uh, characteristics about the Mediterranean Sea basically is that it's a highly polluted sea. So the Mediterranean Sea is a semi-enclosed basin that is so surrounded uh, by quite populated coastline. It's estimated that over, than, over 500 million people live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And so this leads to a lot of pressure on the environment, such as pollution with plastic pollution. Studies have shown that nowadays over 62 million plastic particles are floating in the Mediterranean Sea and plastics can get smaller in smaller size and become microplastic. Uh, and problems with microplastics is that they have a ubiquitous distribution, which means that they can be found everywhere. So from the sea surface to the sea bottom, from coastal area to deep sea, and they can be of threat so for marine organism. And so in the case of our study, we are focusing on the fin whale and fin whale have a particular way of feeding. So with filter feeding behavior, as we can see on the image on the bottom left here, so they tend to have uh, so come to the surface of the water and take huge gulps of water uh, that could then possibly be containing microplastic and then be ingested by this uh, marine mammal. Uh, but what are microplastics? I want to give you a bit of information regarding microplastics. So there are small degrees of plastic of less than five millimeter in length. They could have various origins. So from the clothing industry to automobile to fishing to cosmetics, all human based sources. And problem with microplastic is actually that they are almost impossible to remove from the ocean. So because of their micro microscopic size, and they are really persistent material in the environment uh, because they can take decades to hundreds of years in order to degrade fully. Uh, and because of their small size, they are actually really easily ingestible, uh, confundable by marine organisms that can so easily ingest them. And this can then have potential uh, harmful effect on them. So regarding the aim of the study, so I had two principal aims. So the first one being monitoring the fin whale population uh, that occur uh, along the Catalan coast between the months of uh, March to June. And to study, so the microplastic contamination, so microplastic of size between 0 0.1 and 5 millimeter uh, in the living environment, so in the water and the food web of the fin whale. So to do so, surface water uh, samples were collected and were, that were containing zooplanktonic crustaceans which I repeat are part of the fin whale diet and they were analyzed. And in the same way, small pelagic fish in the case of this study, European pilchard and European anchovy uh, were taken and analyzed as well in terms of microplastic uh, contamination. Regarding our study area, so we are focusing on the Northwestern Mediterranean Sea. So on the Eastern coast of Spain, more precisely near the city of Barcelona. Uh, so characteristics basically of this area is that it's a highly urbanized area with a lot of human activity on going on on the coast. Uh, so which could lead to a lot of uh, pressure on the environment, such as pollution pressure with plastic pollution. And um, it's a high productive, it's a high, it's an important productive area in terms of biomass and biodiversity because there is a lot of land discharge bringing so a lot of nutrients in the water from uh, rivers coming from the Pyrenees. And it's an upwelling area with underwater canyons uh, located really close to the shore, which allow to have so 
uh, really important um, productivity in terms of, of uh, plankton and therefore this attract uh, fish and fin whales in the case of our study. And so there were two studies area where data was collected uh, on the map that you can see here. Uh, there was the fin whale project study area. So in blue, that is below the city of Villanova y la Geltru. So this is where uh, most of the fin whale monitoring occur and where surface water were collected. And on the other hand, we have the small pelagic fish study area, which is so near the city of Barcelona in red, uh, where European pilchard and European anchovy were collected. So how did we conduct our uh, survey of the fin whale in the fin whale project study area? Well, it mainly corresponded to visual survey of the area. So basically, uh, during daylight hours from the month of March, June, we were out on vessels, so on catamaran or inflatable boats, as we can see on the picture there, uh, to basically find fin whales and determine how are the population dynamics there. And uh, so the research, made, the main research work done was basically so to determine how is distributed the population along the Catalan coast, and to therefore take pictures and images of the fin whale individual in order to so identify them and determine uh, how uh, how big is the population there. Uh, to study the behavior of the fin whales, it's important to know if they come here uh, just to travel, if they are feeding in this area, if they are just here to reproduce. And uh, when it was possible, uh, individual of interest were biopsied and tagged that allowed to gather more information about them. Uh, regarding our, our microplastic studies, so it was in two sections. So partly the surface water sample of the Catalan water, and on the other hand, the small pelagic fish. Uh, so to do so in the surface water, well, they were pulled uh, with a plankton net of 100 microns of mesh uh, during the boat surveys in the uh, so area of interest where fin whales were identified feeding. And uh, then uh, when the samples were carried back to the lab, they were first observed under a binocular microscope in order to determine if there was the presence of uh, the fin whale food items. So in terms of krill and or copepods. And then a microplastic analysis were performed uh, so in a qualitative and quantitative way in order to determine how, are the, how is the, the microplastic uh, contamination in the surface water. And the results were then further then uh, statistically analyzed thanks to software like R, uh, Excel, and QGIS. And for the small pelagic fish, it was a bit the same process. So the association at MACTU have a really good relationship with fishermen from the Catalan coast, which allowed us to gather so some fish sample of European pilchard and European anchovy, so which are part, I repeat, of the fin whale diet also. And in order to determine how the microplastic uh, contamination was in this fish, so they were first dissected uh, in order to prelude the digestive tract, which is the organ of interest where it is thought that most of the microplastics are occurring. And uh, we had to do a microplastic extraction step, so which corresponding basically in digesting the or the digestive mm -hmm. tract in a 10% potassium hydroxide solution, so which allowed to dissolve uh, the biological sample and only keep the microplastics in the in the in the sample. And further then, so the sample obtained were analyzed in a qualitative and quantitative way as for the Catalan water, and the results was again statistically analyzed. And so here is our first results regarding the fin whale population along the Catalan coast. So what we can see here in this uh, in this table is that uh, there there is represented. I mean the survey days, the number of sightings, and the number of fin whale observed. So we can see that uh, during the three months of observation, we have done a total of 44 survey, and during those 44 survey, a total number of 115 sightings were done. So sightings corresponds actually to the observation of one or more fin whale individual in the same area at the same time. That's why in comparison with the number of fin whale observed, the number of sighting is lower. And a um, main trend that we've seen, so in the observation uh, that was conducted is that April seems to be the most productive month in terms so of uh, fin whale occurring in the area. Uh, indeed, we have the maximum number of sightings in April with 71, even though the number of surveys is larger, but it seemed that in April, uh, April is the most productive area in terms of uh, plankton, plankton in the region. So, which attracts more uh, whale there. And basically, what we concluded from this fin whale observation was that uh, the Catalan coast during those three months really appeared to be a hotspot for fin whales. And when we observed the main behavior that the fin whale were having in this study area, uh, we've seen that they were foraging a lot. So, indicating that uh, this study area was also an important feeding area for fin whales. Here is a, geographic, uh, a map of the geographical distribution of fin whales along the Catalan coast. So basically, we can see that most all of mostly all of the sightings were done in the south of the city of Villanova, which correspond to the study area. 
An interesting trend, so just from this map, is that we can see that most of the fin wheel points are located actually along and on the edge of the underwater canyons, so where there is the, the upwelling activity and where there is so larger biomass of, uh, of food items for the fin whales. And so we guess that the fin whale actually come in this particular area to feed because so they can find a large amount of food uh, right next to the shore, just a few kilometers from shore. And now if we go into our microplastic analysis uh, that was first conducted, so in surface water sample, we found that in 100% uh, in, in of the surface water sample, there was a contamination by microplastic item. Indeed, in seven water sample collected, a total number of 279 microplastic items were found. And this, we estimated that the concentration in microplastics, so in the study area, uh, was of approximately 0 0.110 uh, items per cubic meter. Uh, and if we have a look at the geographical distribution of, uh, some where, of where the samples were collected on of the different concentration, uh, we can see so that the samples were collected in the same area of where the fin were found feeding. And that basically from this, what we can take is that there is no really huge difference in terms of microplastic concentration. The lowest concentration, for example, at the station P2 and P7, between of approximately 0 0.090 uh, microplastics items per cubic meter, while the largest one in station P6 being of uh, about 0 0.161 items per cubic meter. Uh, but I want to say just that uh, we have a lot of issue during the collection of surface water, so we only have seven sample. And that is quite limiting in order to have a real significant observation of the microplastic contamination of the surface water in the study area. Uh, more than so just uh, the contamination of microplastic, we also found all the elements of the fin wheel diet to be occurring in the samples collected. Indeed, krill was present in five samples out of seven, and copepods were found in every sample. And when we compared our so microplastic uh, contamination uh, found, so I repeat, of about 0 0.110 items per cubic meter in the study area, with other studies that also so estimated uh, concentration of microplastic in surface water in the northwestern Mediterranean, we found quite similar range of concentration. So uh, in the end, which consolidates the result that we obtain, and so that seems that the trend is following what uh, what was expected. And basically, our main conclusion here was that the surface water, uh, so in the study area, uh, contain microplastic uh, contains so microplastics and also the element of the fin wheel diets. Then if we have a look at the microplastic contamination in small pelagic fish, uh, well, what was found here is that uh, one third of the small pelagic fish analyzed were actually contaminated by microplastics. Indeed, in 48 fish analyzed, the total number of 46 microplastic items were found, which correspond to a concentration of about uh, 0 0.958 items per individual in terms of microplastic concentration. And if we have a closer look at the differences in microplastic concentration, uh, between the different station of collection, so station S1, S2, E1, and E2, and between the different species. Uh, we observe, first of all, that uh, the difference, so between statistical analysis have shown that between the different stations, there were significant difference in concentrations in microplastic items. Indeed, the largest concentration was found in station S1 with a value of 2.583 microplastic items per individual, while the lowest one was also uh, for European pill chart, but in station S2 this time, uh, with a concentration of 0 0.083 items per individual. And then when we had a comparison, so between the two species that we analyzed in this study, so European pilchard and European anchovy, uh, we found that uh, the European pilchard average concentration in terms of microplastic uh, items was of 1.333 items per individual, while in European anchovy it was of 0 0.583 items per individual. So it seemed to be lower. However, statistical analysis revealed that there was no significant differences uh, in terms of concern, microplastic concentration between the two species of interest. So we concluded that the species had similar concentration in microplastics. Then if we have a, then our main conclusion, so basically that small pelagic fish appear to be contaminated by microplastics. And when we compared our result uh, with other studies that also uh, so, uh, compared microplastic concentration in these two species of fish along the Spanish Mediterranean coast, uh, we found lower concentrations of microplastics. Uh, as a little resume of how microplastics are affecting the fin whale so occurring environment and diet, here is a simplified schematic uh, that I've done so that represent how the fin whale uh, so is possibly ingesting microplastic directly in its environment, so in the water, uh, because microplastic appear to be present, but also in its food web, so in small pelagic fish and small crustaceans, 
uh, that appear to be also contaminated uh, by microplastics, so which lead to a tropic transfer of the food web of microplastic uh, for the food for the fin whale. It has been estimated that so within the area of study, uh, because of the filter feeding activity, fin whale could be ingesting up to 660 microplastic particles per day, which is a lot. And microplastic could possibly be a threat for the health of fin whale because studies have shown that microplastics ingestion in different marine organism species, so not fin whale, but in fish, for example, uh, have shown that microplastic could lead to different health issues uh, because they transport chemicals, toxic compounds, and diseases that can be transmitted to the individual that ingests them. So as a conclusion of this study, uh, the main findings were basically that the Catalan coast is a hotspot for fin whale between the month of March and June. Uh, fin whale appears to be foraging, so in a water that are contaminated by microplastic, and the food web that is composed of zooplankton crustacean and small pelagic fish are also so occurring in contaminated environment and are also contaminated, which could lead to a larger intake of microplastic for the fin whale then. And even though the effect of microplastic ingestion in fin whale are not well known, uh, yet, uh, studies have shown that in other species, microplastic ingestion could have harmful impact and nothing proved that it could maybe be the same for the fin whale. So further study have to be done regarding so the possible impact of microplastics on fin whale. So I just want to take a little time to thank the Admaxi Association and the MSC Maris for the incredible opportunity I've had during the last six months. And I thank you a lot for listening to my presentation. Thank you, Falco. Thanks a lot. So we are going to uh, to something like 15, 20 minutes uh, of questions. You're still ready? Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so uh, we will start the questions with uh, Elena in Abogio, okay. and then uh, Jean Vincent. So I have a question on uh, some results that you didn't show, but I understand that it's, uh, it's a matter of time about the color of the plastics that you found in uh, in the fish and the color of the plastic that you found in uh, the water. So yeah. do you okay? So in uh, in the water there was more uh, black plastic and in the fish more uh, green plastic. So uh, you think that your sampling effort uh, was enough to to jump to some conclusion about this and which uh, conclusion do you have about uh, this? Yes. So regarding the small pelagic fish analyze, I think that the sample size were big enough in order to have significant results regarding the color that I found many occurring so clear color with like green and brown being the major color. I have this slide actually uh, here as a hidden slide. I think I'll show it to you guys to have an idea. Uh, where did it work? Yeah. So we can see here. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so just so that everyone knows what we're talking about. So here is uh, for, the, for the figure 10, so the figure on the bottom left, uh, is the proportion in terms of color found uh, for the microplastic items in the small pelagic fish. So basically the main finding was that green and brown were the main color and they're considered as clear color. Uh, while in the, in the water samples, the main color found was black. And um, so to come back to your question, uh, yes, I think that for the small pelagic fish, the sampling size was large enough in order to have significant conclusion regarding the color of the microplastic items found. Uh, but however, for the water samples, uh, seven samples is not enough. And I think it needs a lot more in order to have uh, a significant really, uh, estimation of what is the main color uh, for the microplastic items found in, in, our, in so our study. And, and do you think that uh, maybe we we could shift uh, the production of plastic toward a specific color? I, I don't want to say that it's the solution, of course, but uh, yeah. um, do you think that could uh, help to introduce less plastic in the web? Well, for well, the thing is, for sure, uh, if we have colorful plastic, it's easily to, first of all, identify them in the case, for example, when they are larger plastic, so macroplastic. So it could be easily targetable, targetable in order to maybe remove them more from the environment or uh, for when we have them in our, like in at a home or in the, in the, I mean, in the, when you're in, in the wild. Uh, it can be easier not to lost it than maybe colors that can be found uh, directly in the wild, such as like maybe black, that is uh, not a really easy color to spot, or transparent, which was also one of the main color found. Uh, 
So I think it could be a solution to maybe limit the spread of microplastic and to also target them better to maybe have, um, let's say, cleaning, uh, cleaning procedures of like the environment. However, it's quite difficult, I think, to adopt a, like a uniform plastic color uh, for all the plastic production that is ongoing right now around the world. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. So, Jean-Marcel? Yes. And just after Jean-Vincent, uh, let's, we will be with Florian. Okay. Uh, did you uh, identify the zooplankton crustacean, uh, crustacean by yourself? Yes. Okay. I identified them by myself. Okay. So, uh, was there anything other than krill and copepods? Um, I was focusing mainly so on krill and copepods. So when I was seeing their presence, uh, I was like, uh, okay, they are here. But uh, yeah, I saw uh, different species as well uh, present in the samples. However, I, I didn't mention them and I didn't like focus on them because uh, it was a lot to analyze it. And I had a quite limited material, let's say, to completely analyze it. So it was difficult. So I had to contain myself, let's say, to krill and copepods because they were more easily identifiable quickly in the sample when I was analyzing them. Okay, so uh, did you see a, a difference depending on the taxon? Depending on the taxon, there was like a, copepods were definitely the largest present uh, in terms so of, uh, of like um, small crustaceans. They were like present uh, I, I think if I, I didn't, I didn't include proportion, but on a visual observation, what I've seen was that copepods were found like were occupying 75% of the small crustacean of the sample all the time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Surprising copepods, the most abundant. <laughs> Not really. um, so let's go with uh, Florent. And after Florent, we will jump with Luana. Thank you very much and congrats, Falco. Um, my first question is, uh, maybe I missed it if you said it, but uh, sorry mm -hmm. if it's the case. Uh, did you have any, uh, um, did you find any study that uh, helped you understand the repartition of the microplastic in the water column? Uh, yes, there are studies so that are focusing on that. I don't remember exactly the name of it, but uh, I don't know what is your question really, but I think I didn't mention it. But regarding the repartition of plastic in the so in the water column, it really depends so on the characteristic of the plastic item or the microplastics item. So regarding basically their floatability characteristics, their density characteristic, are they sinking more? Also their like attachability. So for example, some items could be more uh, willing like to stick together because of their characteristics. So they can form agglomeration of microplastic also due because of surface currents and. And those different are like oceanographic factors. Okay, my question was um, in the objective to understand if the the, the places where you uh, had your mm -hmm. water samples were yeah. representative of a big concentration of uh, what microplastic or not. Um, well, it has studied. I remember reading a study that showed that uh, the main there's two main area where we actually found uh, so plastics: the surface mm -hmm. and the bottom. Okay. So basically, we I decided to target the the surface because well the material only allowed me to target this, but especially because uh, I wanted to relate this study with the fin whales that we were so seeing in the area, and fin whales all like uh, are known in the Mediterranean Sea and especially on the Catalan coast to practice surface feeding. So they are feeding a lot on the surface. So that's why I decided to target the surface area of the water in order to determine the microplastic contamination. Okay, thank you very much. My other question is about: um, Do you did you find any study um, about the um, the concentration of microplastic in this coast in Spain or in Spain or in the Mediterranean? Um, mm -hmm. Because I know that there's a lack of information about that. So if you found some uh, some studies uh, and where do they come from, um, mm -hmm. that would be interesting. And their, their origin from from coast I know, but from where exactly and uh, yeah. from the, yeah. the the cities the the industry yeah. yeah you're right that for the spanish coast there is not that many studies regarding microplastics like in comparison for example with the gulf of lion or france or even the italian coast where there is much more study 
it was much more difficult to determine so the what maybe people already estimated in terms of microplastic uh, along the coast but i found a few studies that were actually analyzing the content in so the small pelagic fish that i've presented so european anchovy and european pilchard and in the so that was conducted so along the spanish coast between the spain and the balearic island and in this sub particular study they were also uh, determining the concentration of microplastics, but it was very few studies, like uh, maybe five in total I found that was uh, doing microplastic studies there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Florent. So let's go to Luana and then to Christophe Humbert. Okay, hi, Falco. Thank you so, so much for your presentation. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, I have a question, maybe I missed it as well, but on your presentation, you showed two areas where you collect a yeah. sample. So you have one area where you had pin whales, right? And the other where you collect a sample on small pelagic fish. Is that yeah. right? Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to know how, because you found different concentrations in the two sites, in the four sites that you sampled, mm -hmm. how could you link uh, this small pelagic fish concentration of microplastics with the fin whales food chain kind of thing, you know? Um, is there, did you choose yeah. that region for a specific reason? Thank you. Yes. Um, did you hear the question? Here from back, so in the, I think I understand the question, yes. So it's regarding how to link uh, basically where we spot fin whale in another place and concentration in small pelagic fish from another side. Uh, well, basically, we I had to analyze fish from this side because I couldn't have the choice of where I collected the fish. So it was quite difficult for me. However, uh, we were lucky to conduct a few study out of the study area for fin whales. And um, I don't know if I'm going to just share my screen again. Yeah. OK. And uh, it's, it's I didn't precise it during the presentation. But on the figure, where is the geographical representation of the fin whales? Uh, we can see that there's actually a few points out of the study site, so uh, closer to Barcelona. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Closer to Barcelona here, and um, also uh, in the in terms of fin whale sightings here, uh, not all data collected during the season is yet inserted in our in this map. For example, because uh, we had uh, we had an issue with all the data collected, so I couldn't intru I couldn't like put all of them in my results as yet. Uh, however, we did in May we conducted some survey out of the study area, so more closer to the city of Barcelona. And uh, we've spotted fin whale actually really close to the city of Barcelona. So which in the end, uh, in my presentation here, doesn't relate totally with so the concentration in, um, of microplastic in the small pelagic fish. But in reality, uh, we, uh, when I will have all the data included, for example, in this map, we will see that fin whale presents also coincide with the site of, uh, site of taking the data for the small pelagic fish. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I don't know if it will appear, but I just have a quick picture that can be. Yeah, 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 no, no, it, it helps. Uh, it helps, it I think it answers part of my question for sure. Yeah, let me know if you... Falco, quickly, huh? just a few yeah, seconds. Yeah, if my computer open it. Yes. It's just a picture of the whale in front of Barcelona. So I don't know if okay. you recognize the city. So that's the whale here and that's Barcelona behind. So really close in the end. And, this is actually in the study area where the small pelagic fish were collect, we collected. Thank you, Rihanna. Okay. Uh, Chris Christophe, uh, Christophe, and then uh, Eric. Yes, very cool. Thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting. Um, I have one question. When you came to your conclusion, I, I was a bit puzzled mm -hmm. uh, on one point because your first point in your conclusion was that uh, fin waves do come. Uh, between March and June, but mm -hmm. was it part of your microplastic study or is that something which was known before? It was my first question and the second question was the same as Jean-Vincent, so I think you already addressed it was basically uh, what is the status of microplastic in uh, Catalonia versus the rest of the Mediterranean Sea 
And mm. uh, as I understand, there is not much data available or any benchmark studies, right? For this particular area, yeah, there's not much study. And so regarding yeah, the conclusion, basically, yeah. Uh, what I tried to relate in this study was that, so we actually observed fin whale in this study area. So mm -hmm. like, a, that's why I concluded that, I mean, it's a hotspot for fin whale in this study area. And so uh, with the association that I worked for, they wanted to develop that research line. So about the <laughs> microplastic contamination with fin whale. And therefore uh, that's why we decided, so to try to relate, we know that there is fin whale there. So let's try to gather information regarding the contamination in microplastic. So in the water where we spot the fin whale and regarding as well, so it's food web, we know what fin whale eats. So regarding it's food web contamination as well. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Christophe. Um, so we will go to Eric and we'll finish with Aldin. Hi, and thanks, uh, Faco. Very, very interesting. I have actually two questions. One is coming back to your, your map on, on slide nine. You don't have to go there. Basically, what you what you show, so you have several canyons, but yeah. independently of the canyon, there's one really big group, 95% of the weights sighting that were done at the same. Why, why is that? Why is it? Yeah. It's, ba it's basically like, a, it's an interesting finding for this year because uh, I haven't included the map of the past year, but in the past year, they found more fin whales occurring on the other canyon, so more on the Eastern side. Uh, and we think it's basically because the current are going more uh, to, to the south, south, Southern Western direction. Okay. And therefore the productivity from the two canyons uh, so from the one on the East Coast and the one of the left side are basically uh, being carried slowly by currents more to the to the eastern side, which could be inducing so larger quantity of food for fin whale there. And so larger presence of fin whale in that area as well. Okay. The, the other question is more, let's say, conceptual. Um, for, for, for big whale, do you think that microplastic is more harmful or macroplastic? I personally think macroplastic is definitely more harmful and there is a lot of study conducted on that uh, because microplastic can easily so entangle on fin wheel body causing severe damages. A lot of study uh, are done actually on that in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, however, the problem is that uh, we kind of know the effect of microplastic on fin whales, so microplastic are definitely harmful for them, uh, but we have no idea of how microplastic could just be possibly affecting them. Like, are they just ingesting them? Could they be contaminated by them? There is no proven depth in the literature of fin whale with microplastics. Uh, but as microplastics are becoming more and more uh, present in the environment, uh, it's important to try to have uh, advanced view on it already in order to possibly mitigate, mit mitigate it in the future if it's actually affecting fin whales. Okay. I, I think, I don't know really the literature, but I think in general, it's very, very little is known about the impact of microplastic on, on fishes in general or organisms in, in general. Yeah, it's it's not it, that it, much, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Not the easiest model to study, I guess, a whale. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Eric. So we'll conclude with Falco for you, Falco. Okay. Hi, Falco. Thank you so much for this Hello. really nice presentation. Uh, so I have a question regarding this, uh, okay, the microplastics. So you collected a uh, sample from water, then you analyze the microplastic also in, uh, in, um, in a plankton and in a fish, okay? And then uh, yeah. because you did this color code for each plastic, it was really nice that you look at that. So can you link uh, the, what you find in the water with what the animal uptake? What an animal uptake. So yeah. for between the water sample and the fish sample. Yeah. Well, in the case of this study, the only thing that I have to say is that we don't have enough sample of water yet. And it's not the exact same collection site. So I didn't think of like correlating them because it was, I think, too different. But definitely if we collect like fish in the same site as water sample, we can definitely have try to have like um, or again, like a, a correlation between so the the type, the color, and yeah, the sizes of microplastic found so between the, the the in the water sample and in the fish. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
And uh, another question is that if you have to change something in your protocol now to improve your study, what yeah. you will think, what do you want to change? Um, well, it's, it's mainly regarding the material I will have at disposition, this, but I will definitely go for a deeper study regarding the, uh, the really the characteristic of the microplastics item. So there is um, really a more uh, deep study that are done uh, using so spectro spectroscopy, spectrophotometry, I mean, uh, that allow therefore to determine what type of microplastic it is uh, really. So is it like PVC? Is it another type of microplastic? And when we know the characteristic of these microplastics uh, uh, items, we can really know what possible effect they have because we know that some categories have more harmful effect on others. So. Like if I could personal, personally have access to like deeper material, I will definitely like try to give this type of characteristics for the microplastic contamination. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Aldin. So thank you, Falco. Um, it was uh, great to uh, to hear from you. So um, maybe you say it. I know. Are you still in uh, Spain? Yeah, I'm still in Spain, but coming back to France really soon. Very soon. Okay, so your internship is over. Uh, not yet, actually. Like uh, we are actually still conducting some uh, fish sample analysis. So I'm still doing some right now because we had a lot of samples and I have to analyze them. Uh, so I think I will still have still a few weeks of uh, fish analysis to do. Okay, maybe you will. Uh, you will be fed off of uh, of fish and, and things like this uh, after that. <laughs> are you in Spain or in Catalonia? Right now, I, I move now. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not in Catalonia anymore. Right now, I'm in the Madrid region. And, uh, and I will, so I will soon be going back to France with all my samples, taking quite some space, but well, it's like that. Okay, I see you coming, Christophe. Uh, do not start to uh, create problematic uh, with uh, geopolitical <laughs> problems. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Falco. Um, good luck. Uh, have a nice right. summer. And hopefully, uh, so see you on uh, September for the graduation yeah. ceremony. <laughs> See you in September. Bye-bye, Falco. Bye, everyone. So, um...